It took over two months for Kamala Harris to finally sit down for her first solo interview on a major news network. And she decided to do the interview with this lady. Kamala I just said Harris I'm not going to vote not for her. running for perfect. She's running against Trump. We have two choices. And so there are some things you might not know her answer to. And in 2024, unlike 2016 for a lot of the American people, we know exactly what Trump will do, who he is, and the kind of threat he is to democracy. I think the problem that a lot of people have with Kamala is we don't know her answer to anything, okay? But you know and his I think answer I, I, to everything. Kamala heard that and said, what are you doing Wednesday? Stephanie Rule is a business analyst on NBC. She's a Trump hater. And the interview focused on the economy, something Kamala can't talk about, because if she said what her plan was, she'd lose in a landslide. For those who say these policies aren't for me, what do you say to them? Well, if you are hardworking, if you have uh, the dreams and the ambitions and the aspirations of what I believe you do, um, you're in my plan. You know, I, I have to tell you, I really love and am so um, energized by what I know to be the spirit and character of the American people. We have ambition. We have aspirations. We have dreams. We can see what's possible. We have an incredible work ethic. But not everyone has the access to the opportunities that allow them to achieve those things. My vision for the economy, I call it an opportunity economy, is about making sure that all Americans, wherever they start, wherever they are, have the ability to actually achieve those, those dreams and those ambitions. I come from the middle class. Look, my mother raised my sister and me. She worked hard. She saved up. By the time I was a teenager, she was able to buy our first home. And, you know, home ownership for too many people in our country now is elusive. You know, gone is the day of everyone thinking they could actually live the American dream. Kamala was just asked about her policies. She rambled and then said the American dream is gone. She's been in power for four years and said the American dream is gone. She just sank her campaign. But that was just the beginning. How do you go after price gouging without implementing price controls? Because once we get in this zone, people start to get worried and they say, I don't know what she stands for. So just to be very frank, I am never going to apologize for going after companies and corporations that take advantage of the desperation of the American people. Yeah, I'm going to go after them. Yes, I'm going to go after them. So price controls are still on the table. That's not going to fly in this country. What about trade policy? Tariffs aren't unique to President Trump. President Biden has tariffs in place. He's actually looking to potentially implement more. Where do you come out on? Is there a good tariff, a bad tariff? I, well, part of it is you don't just throw around the idea of just tariffs across the board. And that's part of the problem with Donald Trump. I, frankly, I, I'm going to and I say this in all sincerity. I, He's just not very serious about how he thinks about some of these issues. And one must be serious and have a plan, any real plan that's not just about some talking point ending in an exclamation at a political rally, but actually putting the thought into what will be the return on the investment, and what will be the economic impact on everyday people. They just asked her what her trade plan was. She never answered and then said Trump doesn't have one and then never explained what her plan was. Trump's not serious about trade. He's deadly serious. He won a trade war with China, passed the new NAFTA deal, signed new trade deals with South Korea and Japan. He used tariffs to bring countries to the negotiating table. And we had a great economy with no inflation. I don't know if Kamala Harris knows this, but the Biden-Harris administration kept Trump's tariffs on China, then increased them. Kamala was then asked, how she's going to help Americans buy homes they can't afford since inflation drove mortgage rates so high. Some of the work is going to be through what we do in terms of giving benefits and assistance to state and local governments around transit dollars and looking holistically at the connection between that and housing and looking holistically at the incentives we in the federal government can create for local and state governments to actually engage in planning in a holistic manner 
That includes prioritizing affordable housing. I have no idea what she just said. I have no idea. But it sounds like she's going to print more money and give it away. Then Kamala was asked, how is she going to pay for all of these handouts? Giving that extra money for a first home. If you can't raise corporate taxes or if GOP takes control of the Senate, where do you get the money to do that? Do you still go forward with those plans and borrow? Well, but we're going to have to raise corporate taxes and we're going to have to raise. We're going to have to make sure that the biggest corporations and billionaires pay their fair share. That's just it. It's about paying their fair share. But how do you find that line to make sure corporations are paying their fair share, but they're not leaving our country? Well, listen, I work with a lot of CEOs. I have spent a lot of time with CEOs. And I'm going to tell you that the business leaders who are actually part of the engine of America's economy agree that people should pay their fair share. Again, she didn't answer the question. Even if she raises taxes on everybody, it still won't pay for the trillions she wants to spend. Obama already raised taxes and the middle class got hammered. Obama raised taxes and corporations left the country and took their factories with them. That's how Trump got elected. How is she going to stop companies from leaving? Because she knows a bunch of CEOs? Their lobbyists are just going to write loopholes in the bill that she signs. After the interview, Stephanie Rule called Harris a dodger. Here's what's a little tricky. She doesn't answer the question around if the GOP is controlling the Senate, if she can't raise corporate taxes, where is she going to get the money from? And the interview was just as staged as all of her answers. There's a sander with no sawdust in the back and a ladder in the middle of nowhere. What's that doing there? No idea. Today, Trump in North Carolina zeroing in on American working men and women. He's been much more disciplined the last week and a half, more upbeat and more focused on the future. The centerpiece of my plan for a manufacturing renaissance will be a 15 percent made in America tax rate. I'm imposing tariffs on your competition from foreign countries that have ripped us off, which stole all of your businesses and all of your jobs years ago and took your businesses out so that now they won't be able to compete with North Carolina. All of your furniture makers are going to come back and come back bigger and stronger and better than ever before. This is why people in countries want to kill me. They're not happy with me. It is. It's a risky business. That's the kind of swagger and attitude from 2016. Remember, fight for the little guy, America first trade policy that puts money in your pocket and doesn't give foreigners a free ride. The Europeans have a 25 percent tariff on American whiskey. They have a 10 percent tariff on American cars. Meanwhile, America lets all the European wine and cars come in here duty free while our Navy protects their shipping and our nukes protect their safety. The Europeans don't spend any money on their militaries, so they spend it on lavish social safety nets because we pay to protect them. You, your tax dollars. We had this arrangement after World War II because their economies were devastated. So we opened up our market to help them recover and in exchange created this network of alliances against Soviet communism. But the Cold War is over and this isn't fair to the American taxpayer or the American worker. To the workers of this state, when you hear Kamala Harris attack my tariffs today, you wouldn't have anything left in this state if I didn't do what I did. This building would be now shuttered, closed, empty, no jobs, and now it's thriving. Just remember, Kamala's not attacking me. She's attacking your furniture jobs. She's attacking your communities. She's attacking your factories. And she's trying to send all of those jobs to China with everything else. And we're not going to let that happen. Kamala Harris is still pushing globalization after it gutted our jobs in factories. So what is exactly the vice president's economic agenda? Massive welfare checks to buy starter homes? It's only going to trigger more inflation and drive home prices higher. She wants to build more homes, but she spent seven trillion dollars and she only was able to build seven car chargers. I'm going to go with the guy who builds for a living. 
She wants to tax unrealized gains. That idea was laughed out of the room. She wants price controls again, laughed out of the room. The rest is your typical tax and spend San Francisco socialist garbage that doesn't work, never has. After five days off, Kamala delivered, as they build it, a big economic speech today. And primetime producers watched it, so I didn't have to. And they told me she didn't say anything. She didn't say anything new, nothing, no new policy, nothing. And the New York Times agreed with Jesse Waters' primetime, saying she revealed little new about her economic pitch. She just came with the same empty slogans. I call my vision the opportunity economy. What I imagine and believe and call um, an opportunity economy. Developing and, and creating an opportunity economy. I intend to create an opportunity economy. Why do we need an opportunity economy if Bidenomics is working? Shouldn't we already have opportunity? She shouldn't she just be running on let's keep going? Well, she is, but she can't say that because everybody knows where we're going is in the wrong direction. Kamala isn't saying how she's going to help. She's just saying she grew up just like you. I grew up in a middle class family. I grew up a middle class kid. I grew up a middle class kid. I was raised as a middle class kid. But how middle class is she? Kamala was raised in Berkeley, California by parents with PhDs, one of the nicer neighborhoods in San Francisco. She spent her weekends in Palo Alto, went to private schools, lived in a nice little neighborhood in Montreal, took trips to Jamaica, and then once claimed she worked at McDonald's without any evidence. We don't want to hear Kamala's fake promises, even something like she worked very long and hard hours over French fries at McDonald's. It was a lie. She never worked at McDonald's over the hot French fries. I think I'm going to a McDonald's in two weeks, actually. And I'm going to work the French fries because I will have worked longer and harder at McDonald's than she did if I do that even for half an hour. Even people working at McDonald's were better off under Donald Trump than Biden-Harris. Americans got a $7,000 raise under Trump and haven't gotten a raise since. But the Biden-Harris people are saying Americans just have a bad memory. Americans, when you ask the question, are you better off today than you were four years ago, many Americans misremember just how bad the economy was four years ago and how strong our economic recovery from the pandemic has been. You know, we're being sick of being told that we don't realize how good we have it. Our memories are shot, crimes down, borders secure. We're sick of it. It's actually making traditional Democrats Consider the unthinkable. Shante Milano Willis isn't sold, isn't sure the vice president is up to the top job. I've been a Democrat my entire adult life. This has actually been the first year where I was considering voting Republican. Her mother isn't happy. Never thought she'd see a black person president in her life. She did. Now Kamala Harris is for president. My mother says she don't care what she does. Let's just get her in there. And I simply don't feel the same. Kamala is only pretending to fight for you because she knows she's losing you. If she cared, she would have done all the things she's promising to do. Kamala goes to work every day in the White House. Families are suffering now. So if she has a plan, she should stop grandstanding and do it. Just do it. You have you have a few months left. Do it. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else. Sincerity. Sincerity. Elusive. Elusive. Ramble. Ramble. Exclamation. Exclamation. Holistic, holistic, loophole, loophole, dodger, dodger, zero in, zero in, upbeat, upbeat, swagger, swagger, shuddered, shuddered, gutted, gutted. Grandstanding. Grandstanding. 
If you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing to my channel to stay up to date with future videos. Thank you for watching.